The Tinder Swindler. The world of dating can be full of embarrassing pitfalls at best and dangerous situations at worst. Online dating is not much better. Nowadays, with so many dating apps and services, it's becoming quite a crazy hassle to try to work through the algorithm and find the one. We've all had awful dating experiences during recent years on these conditions, but hey, at least you didn't lose hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. I mean, hopefully you didn't. Sadly, the women who fell victim to Simon Laviv did. The once self-titled Prince of Diamonds, and more recently named the Tinder Swindler, has risen to prominence not just on the crazy amount of money he swindled from his victims, but from a recent documentary by Netflix. This old type of criminal, often known as a confidence man or lady killer, has found a new home in a new virtual setting. Now, how much of his story is true or myth? Well, how about for a start, Simon Laviv isn't even his actual name. Yeah, it's gonna be a story about that type of liar. You know the one, the really gross dudes that give themselves cool sounding nicknames and are so pathetic that instead of actually trying to lead a good life, they find themselves stealing from others. This is Mula TV, and today we are talking about Shimon Yehuda Hayat, the Tinder swindler. But before we start, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss any of our videos. Early life. Laviv was born Shimon Yehuda Hayut in 1990 in Ramat El Kanan, B'nai Brak, Israel. Apparently the son of a rabbi, and already from a young age, he seemed to be obsessed with getting to what he would later call the good life. At the age of 15, he managed to move to Brooklyn, New York, in the US with his family's friends, to set up his career in the Big Apple and to try his hand at business someday. This same friendly family would later accuse him of misusing their credit card which is already probably a good indicator of his character. I don't know about you, but stealing from friends and family seems like a pretty big red flag. Despite all that, Shimon was able to keep his nose clean long enough to attend a flight school in 2010, where he got an appetite for flying, or at least pretending to fly, real fancy jets and airplanes. He later changed his legal name from Shimon Hayut to Simon Laviv, using the surname Laviv to pretend he was related to Lev Avnorovich Laviv, an Israeli businessman known as the King of Diamonds, from which he took his nickname, the Prince of Diamonds. Just for a quick heads up, much later, when his entire criminal enterprise was found out and the actual Lviv family confronted him for stealing their name, Shimon defended himself by pretty much saying, hey, I didn't know you had a copyright on your name. Early crimes. Apparently, the Leo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks movie Catch Me If You Can had a big effect on his career choices from early on. Even if Shimon himself doesn't actually have an ounce of actual charisma or talent, like any good con artist, he's good at pretending he does and at stealing other people's work. According to interviews done by Felicity Morris, Shimon Boy has been committing minor cons like check fraud since all the way back when he was a teenager. In 2011, Hayut was charged with theft, forgery, and fraud for cashing stolen checks. According to reports, he stole a checkbook belonging to a family while babysitting their child, and another's while working as a handyman at their home. He never showed up in court and escaped the country across the border into Jordan with a fake passport under the name Mordecai Nizam Tapiro and fled to Europe. In 2012, he was indicted by Israeli court and charged with theft and forgery of checks, as well as for leaving a five-year-old he was babysitting unattended. In 2015, he was arrested in Finland and sentenced to three years in prison for defrauding several women. You can already see a pattern here, probably. Lots of forgery, tricking people into liking him, and even trusting him with their prized possessions. Of course, Shimon wasn't the type of liar to let himself get caught in his own web. Much like most poker players and politicians, he decided to double down so to speak. When arrested in Finland, he claimed he was an Israeli man born in 1978. It didn't help his case, though, that he was found with two forged Israeli passports, three forged Israeli driver's licenses, two forged Israeli flight permits, and five forged American Express credit cards. Quite a deck to have. After finishing his sentence early, he returned to Israel to be recharged and sentenced in 2017. However, according to the Times of Israel, he assumed a different identity by changing his legal name to Lviv and fled the country again. Shimon traveled around Europe pretending to be different people. He exploited several women in Germany using the name Michael Bilton, probably a bad riff on the great Connecticut singer-songwriter Michael Bolton, who, frankly, deserves better. In 2019, he was arrested by Interpol in Greece after using a forged passport. Later that year, he was sentenced to 15 months in prison in Israel, but was released five months later as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. According to the Times of Israel, in 2020, he pretended to be a medical worker to get the COVID-19 vaccine early. Yeah, this guy is that level of gross. He's also wanted for various grifts, frauds, and forgeries offenses by Norway, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. 
the Tinder Swindle. But let's get right down to business. You're here to hear about Shimon's greatest capers, what people are affectionately calling his Tinder Swindles. So here's how that worked and how that went. This was all during his European tour around the edge of 2018 towards 2020, an extremely profitable couple of years for his grubby little hands. Aided by dating apps and his skill for creating false personas, Shimon would pretend, like we discussed earlier, to be the son of tycoon Lev Lviv. Our boy Shimon apparently followed a pattern. He would match with a woman on Tinder, take her on a costly and impressive first date, in the case of Cecil Schroeder Fjellhoy, a trip on a private jet for example, and slowly build their relationship while flying around the world and secretly dating other women. His accusers claimed that, at a certain point, Hyatt would confide in them that he was worried a nebulous group of his enemies was just around the corner. Eventually, he would send a photo of his bleeding bodyguard, allegedly injured by these enemies, to incite further concern. Once that groundwork had been laid, he would urgently message each girlfriend to say that his credit card could not be used for security reasons and ask her to open a new one under her name for him to use. Shimon, the big brave boy he was, would evade repayment by cajoling, threatening, and otherwise stalling with his victims. Of the three women who were willing to expose Lviv's scheme in the Tinder Swindler, Cecile Schroeder was the first to come into contact with Lviv. After they matched on the dating app, Cecile met Simon Lviv in person for the first time in 2018, in the lobby of a London hotel. Lviv sported fancy clothes, walked alongside seemingly important people, and seemed to be above any suspicion. Four months later, however, Lviv began to say that there were threats against his life and that the two could no longer meet in London. Twelve months after their first meeting, the Tinder swindler doubled down on his claims of being in danger by sending pictures of him hurt and bleeding to Cecile. It was then that the ceaseless requests for money began. A little over a year after their first conversation, Cecile realized she was being schemed. Simultaneously with the Cecile case, the Tinder swindler was allegedly tricking another victim, Pernilla Skloholm. It was not until Cecile's story broke out that Pernilla realized she was also being targeted by a scheme. In her case, the first request for money came eight months after their first meeting in March 2018. The third victim, Eileen Charlotte, was the last one to be schemed by the Tinder swindler before Levine's arrest in 2019. Although Lviv was sentenced to 15 months, he was let go before the end of that year. Thing is, as silly as his Ponzi scheme based on tricking women was, he actually got away with this jet set lifestyle and about 10 million big ones. Now, much like ourselves, you're probably wondering exactly how he managed to do so. Well, the straight answer isn't that he was some kind of genius or anything like that. Probably quite the contrary considering that once he finally got caught, he was eating mall food court leftovers. It's simple. Nobody was really looking for him. These types of crimes are criminally under-investigated in Europe. Shimon also made a habit of sending increasingly unhinged WhatsApp voice messages that lasted up to 10 minutes, like all level-headed, smooth, and cool criminals are known for doing. He even sent one to the filmmakers when he learned about the Tinder swindler's existence. The Payback Swindling the Swindler Eventually, though, Shimon bit off more than he could chew. Or to put it another way, he tried to swindle someone who wasn't quite as naive as his other victims, and definitely more clever. One of Shimon's long-term girlfriends, Eileen Coleman, saw the VG piece written about him and turned the table. After the story started to go viral across Europe, Shimon had to take a break from jet-setting and lay low. He turned to Coleman, the only woman who seemed to trust him for help. But she was way ahead of him. Coleman eventually convinced him that she could sell his designer brand clothes to make some cash, and simply kept the money, swindling the Tinder swindler herself. After some quick detective work, she deduced that Shimon was trying to fly to Greece and gave his flight information to the authorities. He was arrested in 2019 and sentenced to 15 months in prison for fraud in Israel soon after. The now. Shimon is back in Israel after having only served an embarrassing fraction of his sentence. We think this last anecdote makes for a pretty good summary of his whole shtick, and hopefully an ending to his swindling ways. Four months ago, Israel's News 13 met Shimon for an interview at what he said was his luxury home. I was wronged for things I never did, he claimed in Hebrew. I always loved the good life, I will not lie. Hyatt gave the news team a tour of his home, which was furnished with photos of himself and his girlfriend. Afterward, though, the news team learned that the home was actually an Airbnb. When asked for comment, the surprised Airbnb owner told the news team, obviously he did not live in it. So what do you guys think? Was Shimon a hero of the people swindling rich folk, or just another snake in the grass taking advantage of others? Did he repay his debt from his crimes, or does he deserve harsher punishment? 
What about the law? Is it too lax and unsafe? Is digital dating really that dangerous? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss any of our videos.